Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you can see right here, this is the BMW E60 M5. Now if many of you guys are wondering, there's a new layout to my videos. That's purely because I now have my own land and I'll be talk more about that in a future video. But today, the reason I've got the E60 M5 is purely because I'm gonna be replacing the E60 fuel pump. Now, since I've had this car, this car keeps throwing fuel pressure adaption lights. Now it doesn't do it all the time. It only does it when the cruise control is actually on or the speed is set at a certain speed where the fuel isn't getting enough pressure to the engine unless you're always revving the crap out of it. Now, this car has always had that issue. Now, bearing in mind when I bought this car, the fuse was blown for the fuel pump, which leads me to believe the fuel pump was probably faulty even back then. The car has been driving still fine. It still starts up fine, still runs fine to this day, but I'm still not happy with it. So I have bought a replacement fuel pump and I am gonna replace this on my E60. Now the fuel pump location is actually on my driver's side on the UK cars. On left-hand drive vehicles, it will be on your passenger side, which is my driver's side. So we are gonna go ahead and replace that on E60 M5 and this does apply to all BMW E60s regardless of the engine you actually have. The fuel pump location will be the same and the fuel pump will be exactly the same. So I ain't gonna talk anymore. Let's get onto the video and let's get removing the E60 fuel pump from my M5. What? God damn, get it done, will you? When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes cause his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay guys, so if many of you guys don't know, on the BMW E60s, the fuel pump and the fuel filter is located on the rear of the car. Now BMW put them just directly underneath the seats going into the fuel tank itself. Now I do recommend if you are planning to do this to make sure your car is on either quarter of a tank or nearly empty before changing this out because the more fuel you got the harder it is going to be to pull the hose and you're going to have to put your hands into petrol now bearing in mind i haven't got gloves on yet but i will be putting gloves on way before i even put my hand into them tanks now we are going to go ahead and remove the seats then we're going to release the bolts underneath that hold the base onto which covers the fuel filter and the fuel pump location then we're going to target the fuel pump so let's get onto it so the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is you're going to want to pull your seats up just like that and you're going to want to pull them out just simply like that. Now if many of you guys don't know, we have to target the fuel filter side first and that's purely because the fuel pump hoses connect to the fuel filter on this side. So we are going to have to take them off this side before we can move over to the fuel pump on the other side. Now I have already replaced this uh, when I first got the BMW 16 5 therefore I'm not going to be replacing it again because it is still very new. So we are just going to unbolt it, unclip all the hoses, go into the fuel pump and then go to the fuel pump and remove that. So if you see here, you just want to pull it up forward, just like that. And then you're going to want to bring this back as far as possible. Be careful not to break any of the wiring because this goes to the tensioner on the belts and also the fuel pump wiring harness. Now, if you see, these are, I believe, 10 mil or 8 mil. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll check in a second. But I believe they are 10 uh, mil bolts. We are going to take them off. This casing will be exposed and there's a plug on top of the fuel filter that we need to unplug. And then we should be able to disconnect the hose which runs to the top of the fuel filter also before we knock the filter out and be able to remove all the hoses. So if you can see here, we are gonna release that and I believe these are 10 mil, so they are 10 mil nut that hold to secure this down. The next side isn't gonna be so easy because that's the disconnection. Now, if you look underneath here, when we take that out, you have got a plug that literally locks on to the filter itself. So I'm gonna slide that off, pull that to the side. Now this is your hose right here, which is actually locked down. Before we expose that, I am gonna get a cloth because petrol is gonna come out probably everywhere, especially because I started it, to move the car. Now my best advice is before you disconnect this hose, is to probably, if you have to start your car to move it before you do this, make sure you let the car sit so the fuel pressure goes back down before you do this job. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and do is just release it. And just like that, it's released, but we've got a lot of fuel pressure bursting out. So we just want to cover it up, as you would have seen there. And the fuel is hot, very hot. We just want to get a cloth, dry it up, and it's all gone into the seats as well. So we're just going to dry all that up before 
we remove the filter and just like that it's now all been removed so that's the fuel gone now what we're going to do is just bang this round the ring you want to keep that hose out of harm's way as i said because you don't want to break it and just like that the ring's now released so now what we'll do is take the locking ring out put that to the side and now we have access to the fuel filter now the fuel filter you will have to lift up very be very set careful with it not to break it and now what we're going to want to do is locate all the pipes which you'll see on here which we're going to have to pull off the pipes are very very um brittle as well inside here just like that it's one of the hoses off and we'll let the fuel just leak out and then we need to get the other one off which is just here now that one's off now we just need to disconnect the last one which is this one going to the fuel line also which we're just going to pop out just like that and then that's the fuel filter released now what we're going to go ahead and do is go to the other side so we can now take out the fuel pump okay so now that's been released now we're going to target this side which this side's on clips which we're going to need to just lift up locking ties just like that now again 10 mil nuts right here so we are going to have to release all of them and just like that that one's out then we're going to pull the connector and the connectors out now if you'll see on this one there is no hose here it's only on the fuel filter side so we've just got to knock this one out and then take this out it's very very simple we've disconnected from the other one so this one should just pull out along with all the pipe at the other end so it shouldn't be a challenge at all getting the fuel pump out now but we are going to have to knock this out there we have it the locker ring off now we should be able to get to the fuel pump there we go there is our fuel pump I'm just gonna let that drain back down before we take it completely out we still hold on somewhere find out where there was just one hose left on the filter before removal of this and here we go here it comes coming straight out and just like that the fuel pump is now out so as you can see there everything is now out this side I've took out the whole fuel filter and this side is completely empty on fuel so this is the main empty side which is quite a shame because the other side is full of fuel would have been easier if it was empty on that side but we have no choice but it should be okay we're now going to pass the other fuel pump through the reason i took that out is so i can get to the plugs and if i have to put my hand in and pull them through and then connect them up to the fuel filter and then put the fuel filter back in that's the easiest way of doing it and that's the way we're going to do it do make sure though when you pull out your fuel filter you save your o-ring that goes around the top here if you have a new one with your new fuel filter or your new fuel pump replace it because it makes sense because you have it there already so this right here is the new fuel pump and if you can see it's all brand new i've had it for quite a few months um been waiting to install it so we are going to take out it out now if you'll see here on the fuel filter it's got a brand new pad like this you don't want to take this off leave this on for the filter this is the float for the sender so just be sure not to mess with that and not to bend it as you'll get a wrong fuel level reading so be careful with that when you're putting it in if you'll see here as well on 
the new piping you have got blanks on them which you're going to have to take off to reconnect it to the other fuel pump which we're going to go ahead and do so we are just going to take these off very simply just pop them out and you're going to take off all the caps these always come like this even on the fuel filters so just be sure to take them all off take that locking tab off then we're ready to reinsert the pump into the car so now we're going to reinsert all the pipes for the fuel pump you're just going to want to stick and stick them as far back as possible make sure you get them over to the other end just like that and you're just going to want to put your float in along with your fuel pump And just like that that's in ready to bolt up once we now get it on the other side so now the fuel pump is back in place and i have secured it down now one thing when you run the fuel pump many of you would have seen it has got a big long hose on it that runs to the other side you're going to want to stick that long hose up through the side there and round there's a gap you'll feel a hose on the fuel filter side like a tube coming out that's the hole where you're going to run the wires up through the back there and round to the fuel filter side. Now it will help if you do have an extra pair of hands to grab it from the other side as you're passing it through because the hose is a bit all kinked and crooked to fit to go through there. So do make sure you do have an extra pair of hands because it will be difficult to do it yourself. You have to be jumping probably in the middle and grabbing it through the other side. And obviously it would help if someone has smaller hands to fit right down the back there like I just did. So I had someone come and help me put their hand over the other side and grab the hose so I sent it through the top bit up the top there so it'll come up the top here through the side and round and that is how you put the fuel pump in you'll probably notice here i have got the fuel filter back on and i've actually done all the locking collars back on as well that's purely because they were popping off obviously as they do the seals are still fine therefore i reused my seal on there that seal was actually brand new when i replaced the filters therefore i don't need to change that one because i'm not changing the filter but that is all done now so now what i'm going to go ahead and do is bolt all the caps back down and then we'll run the car and i'll show you how you should be running the car after you replace the fuel pump and what you shouldn't do so let's get all this back together and i'll show you how to start the car after replacing a fuel pump so as you see there the car is now back together i'll put the rear seats back on the fuel pumps are connected everything is done and it's not such a hard job i mean it can be quite fiddly but apart from that it can be done in around half hour to 40 minutes depending if you're recording or obviously not recording but I'm now going to demonstrate to you what you should be doing with your car after you replace your fuel pumps and how to actually start the car up after because obviously the fuel pumps will be dry and therefore they'll have no fuel in them because we just replaced the fuel pump. So I'm going to show you what you need to do. So you are going to want to get in your car, put your key in the ignition. You're going to want to start the car, let it cycle. You're just going to want to let it cycle on and off the ignition. So we'll turn the ignition off, turn it back on so the fuel can get round. You know what we'll do is turn it off again, and then do it again, turn the ignition on, and you can hear the fuel pump buzzing, priming away, and also the relay activating the fuel. So we'll keep doing that for another two times, just let the fuel get round, do it again. And then what we should be able to do is start the car up, just like that. Here. it's perfectly running after the fuel pump change we've got the car fully running and started so that's the car now running perfectly you can hear there okay guys so as you've seen there i've now installed the fuel pump to my bmw e60 m5 this will be the same regardless of what engine you have in your bmw e60 this is specifically the same for all petrol engines on the BMW E60 and also the E90. Do not think this applies to the diesel because it simply does not. If you have a petrol, this will apply to you regardless of what engine you have. This is not just applicable to the E60 M5. As you can hear, the car is running behind me. I'm now going to take it out for a test drive, let it all come through the system and hopefully everything will be okay. 
I'll report back to you guys and let you know if it's actually fixed the issue with the fuel pressure adaption later on in another video. So thank you very much for watching guys and I hope this video will actually help you replace your E60 fuel pump. Thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.